Come on, if you know God's good, say amen. If God's ever done something in your life, come on, put it in the chat. Raise your hand in the chat for us real quick. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Great job. Great job. That's a, that's a, those are the kind of moments right there we can never take for granted. And uh, the moments that I know that you guys are constantly praying for as you're rehearsing and um, doing all of the uh, work. And I know that takes a lot of time and energy and effort and it never goes unnoticed. And uh, thank you for creating moments like this every week. Uh, for us to be able to just lean a little more into God's presence, right? There's something, there's something so freeing when you get to just, you know, you know that old school song, lean on me. When I, no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like sometimes that's the, that's the way I feel like worship should be, you know? Woo! Man. And, um, you know, that's what I really believe worship is, is where you get to um, kind of set aside everything, all the control that you have, and just lean into the presence of God. And uh, that's when you really get to see a lot of freedom happen in your life. And I know sometimes it can seem a little like, uh, really? Well, try it. Try it. And I promise you, um, you'll be able to see God do immeasurably more in your life. Um, Ephesians 3.20. And, uh, and so we're glad that you're here. Uh, maybe you're leaned in right now. This is your first time at Rhythm Night. We want to say welcome. We love you. And uh, I'm the youth pastor here at Elevation Church. And we do this every single week. We call it Rhythm Night. We like to get in the right kind of rhythm. You know what I'm saying? You know when you hear that song and you just start bumping to it? You're just like, yeah. Right, we're trying to get you into that rhythm with Jesus, okay? That's how we, that's how we got E over there, right? And, um, and so we do it every single week at six o'clock. Uh, it's here on the YouTube channel. Uh, in fact, if you're in the room right now, you can find your way to your seat. You can chill out for a little bit. And uh, what we do in this moment is we really kind of um, dig into the Word of God, okay? And uh, we don't take this part lightly. Um, but it is probably one of the most important parts because we believe that the Bible was written with 100% truth and 100% grace. And uh, we believe in everything. Everyone say everything. 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 Put it in the chat. Say everything that the Bible says. And uh, we, 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 we know that we are held accountable for the things that we say on stage and the things that we don't um, say. But I know you enjoyed uh, the beginning because Layton and Mate are probably one of the funniest duos that, that has ever happened. And uh, it will be forever, we are forever indebted to you as a youth ministry. Thank you. <laughs> they love you. They really do. They really do. Uh, people are saying, hi, Rebecca. They, how do they see you, babe? It may just be like, maybe just be like sneaking, sneaking. Who, who we got? Who we got on here? Let me know where you're from, real quick. Daniel, what's up, Daniel? And uh, oh man, um, I can't see. Dominic, Do this happens to me every time. I need to get glasses. Um, Cameron, what's up, Cameron Hagler? Hey, big dog, I love you. I miss you. Jonathan in the chat, Cole in the chat, and in the room. Let's go, Carlos. What's up? Anthony LaRue, shout out Matthews. Come on, show him some love. Carlos, um, everyone in the room is, is chatting on here. Uh, there we go, there we go. Brielle, sorry, you can let it roll. John and Sarah. Um, we got people from Charlotte, Mexico, Paraguay, Canada, Arizona, Colombia, Florida, um, Newark, uh, uh, Uganda, North Carolina, obviously, Texas, Germany, Wow, Colorado. Come on, y'all got to give them some love real quick. Tennessee, Canada again. We got a lot of people from the six out here. Fantastic. Florida, Tennessee. Drake is not on. I haven't seen Drake yet, but they shouting out the six. You know what I mean? Um, Alaska is cold there. You probably get that a lot. Um, Oregon. Wow, phenomenal. You know, sometimes you just got to really breathe in some things that you would never have thought possible, right? And uh, Switzerland, Minnesota, I mean, you could be lying to me, honestly, and we're just going, and, and that could be happening. You, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's, it could be New Jersey, Iowa. Okay, well, hey, we're glad that you're here. 
And uh, again, this happens every week. But the main thing is we wanna make sure that you are getting into an e-group. Really what an e-group is, is just a small group of people that you can create some community with. And uh, there is nothing worse than doing life alone. Can I get an amen for that? Um, you know, like when you have that best friend, there's just something about that. And there's a lot of power in that. And uh, really, we built our youth ministry um, to be able to make sure that you have a leader in your life, a mentor in your life. When I left my youth ministry at 18, I didn't remember a sermon. I didn't remember a worship song. We didn't have Elevation Rhythm, though. Um, I didn't remember an event, but I did remember my leader, Caleb McNaughton. And um, he, 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 he brought me to know the Lord. Um, he helped me stay accountable when I was, like, making some bad decisions. And... Um, uh, and now we're doing ministry together, not like necessarily the same church, but uh, the same kingdom. And um, it, it's really cool to be able to have someone in your life, in your adolescent years, to be able to um, help you, right? They don't necessarily know everything, right? We're not saying that I know everything or that anyone here knows everything, but there is something about living life and knowing that you are not alone. And uh, tonight, I hope you get a little glimpse of this for the next 15 minutes. I want to I wanna, um, just talk on a passage of John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. Uh, John chapter 1, it's going to be on the screens for you. If you, if you do have the Bible, uh, make sure you open it up. You can open it up. If you're watching on YouTube and you've got your phone, maybe open up that YouVersion app. Thank you, Craig Groeschel and Life Church. We appreciate you. Uh, John chapter 1, 35 through 42. And I believe uh, John did a, a brilliant job in really letting you know why we called it the shadow volume. And, um, you know, this is my 12th year in youth ministry, Leighton. I know I don't look that old. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, why are you laughing, Barb? Come on, why are you laughing at me? And uh, I can tell, I can tell she'll laugh. I can't see you, but I know you in here. Um, 12 years. And you know what I get a lot? You know how people are like, oh my God, I know everyone's asking uh, what I use for my cream on my face. Okay, it's not like that, right? Uh, but people really do talk about this. Um, and I don't know if it's like a youth ministry thing or if it's a me thing, but people will be like, man, why do you, why, why do you never go deep in scriptures? You know, have you ever heard this before? Uh, maybe you ever heard like a, um, maybe a pastor talk about this. Why, uh, you kind of just stay surface level. And um, tonight, uh, you know, I've been talking about this idea of discipleship. And I think people um, really like to tie the word deep and discipleship together. And I think a lot of times discipleship can happen in a very simple way. And so um, John chapter one, verse 35, this is what it says. It says, the next day, John was there again with two, everyone say two, of his disciples. And when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, it's the Lamb of God. Everyone point and say, look. You can point wherever. Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Ah, turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, Hey, bros, what you want? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Where are you going? Jesus replied, come and you will see. Come and you will see. Woo, I believe Jesus is asking you to come and you will see what he has for you. Ah, but that is the, that is the statement that we find ourselves listening for Jesus for, but then not answering and not following him. Come and you will see. But what's going to happen, Lord? Come and you will see. Does that mean that you're going to heal my mom? Come and you will see. Does that mean I'm going to get everything that I've been asking for? Because I've been praying for it for about three or four years now. And I've been going to church a lot, but nothing ain't really happened between you and me. He says, come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and they spent the day with him. And it's about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard what John had said and who had followed 
Jesus. Last two verses. The first thing Andrew did. Everyone say the first thing. Come on, say the first thing. Put it in the chat. Say the first thing. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. We have found the Christ. John 1, 42, and he brought him to Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus. I want you to help me with my title tonight. I want you to help me with my title tonight. This is what I got, and I want you to fill in the blank. Put it up there real quick. A true follower of Jesus, blank. I want you to fill in the blank in the chat. If you're in the room, put it in the chat. Don't yell it out. Don't get crazy. I don't need no riots on me. A true follower of Jesus, blanks. What would you put? A true follower of Jesus, blanks. It's not, it doesn't have to be necessarily a word. It could be a phrase, it be, you know, it could be a run on sentence, I don't care. True follower of Jesus, blanks. <laughs> Low key, someone said goes to the polls. <laughs> oh man, Jesus help us. We'll just leave that one there. A true follower of Jesus helps. A true follower of Jesus listens. A true follower of Jesus has faith. A true follower of Jesus loves. A true follower of Jesus prays. A true follower of Jesus trusts. Woo. A true follower of Jesus forgives. A true follower of Jesus shares. What you got? What else you got? Praise. Okay. Um, Devi said, a true follower of Jesus walks on water. Come on, somebody. I love it. I love it. You know, um, all y'all know, I got, I got a third kid on the way and, uh, he's, you know, he's practically coming out with tattoos. He's going to be so cool. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I got a 14 year old by the name of Brody and, uh, he's, a, he's a, he's a man. He's just a straight man. I wish I was that good looking at that age. And unfortunately I'm still not. However, um, at the, and then I've got a four year old. Okay. Um, I got a four-year-old uh, by the name of Genesis. And then, you know, Laney will come out in like, you know, uh, like four weeks. Okay, we're just praying for it. We're just like, come on, dog. Let's hurry up. Hurry up with this. Hurry up, big dog. And uh, anyways, um, Halloween just happened, right? And I don't know uh, for you whether or not you, you, like, you like participate in Halloween. I, I, I don't care. Uh, that, that's not what this is about. Um, however, I do have a four-year-old, Okay. I got a four-year-old and he likes candy, all right? So we're going trick-or-treating whether you like it or not. And uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, my boy was rocking. Now, it, I know how y'all don't know how like, um, you know, like baby uh, clothes work, but this like 2T, 3T, 4T, 5T, 6T, uh, and keeps on going, I don't know when it stops, but he wears a 5T, okay? I got him a 6T outfit, so that's bigger. Right? I'm not joking. I should have got a picture of this. We should have done this. Um, but I mean, his, his entire outfit was like, I mean, it's like he couldn't fit. Like it went through the dryer before. I mean, just scrunched up. Like his just booty is just get scrunched up in this little thing. And he's just, <laughs> he's walking around, you know, trying to get as much candy as possible. But he's the cutest thing in the world. He's four years old, you know? So, and, and I said, it's one day, bro. It's one day. He's like, Dad, this doesn't really work. I, and, and honestly, he wasn't really mad about it. But I was low-key mad about it because I was like, I'm trying to help this guy out. And he ain't comfortable in his outfit. He's like, he's skeletons and just, anyways. That's not the point of the story. I just want to talk about my son. Um, but the point of the story is to go trick-or-treating. Now, four years old, this is when they get real hyped, okay? They got their whole basket. They're pumped. Now, we're going in our neighborhood. Our neighborhood's real nice. And people like all over will like go do this together with their kids. And I'm not gonna lie to you. It started getting a little dark. And y'all know how it got a little dark a little earlier. My son's kind of like, oh, doing this thing with all of his friends. And we're kind of just chilling there. I can kind of see him. I'm about 15, 20 feet away from him, but can know like, all right, you're kind of in the uh, generic area. And then all of a sudden it started getting dark. And I could sense my son 
slowly getting closer to me, right? As we're going from house to house to house to house. All of a sudden, we go around this one um, corner and, and Genesis is like, Dad, we ain't going down this street, bro. He don't talk like that. Be like, Dad, Dad, <laughs> we not going down this street. No, 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 I don't want to do it. I'm like, why? He said, you see that? I'm like, what? <laughs> what you looking at? He said, that. You see that? It's so. <laughs> I'm like, son, I don't know what you're talking about. Dad, that, that. And, he's, and he goes, it's, it's, it's a witch. It's a witch. He don't know what a witch is. It was like a pumpkin blow up. That's it. But he called it a witch. It's a witch. I said, oh, I do see that blow up. I said, you scared of that? He said, yeah. He said, look, daddy, I ain't about to do that. I ain't going over there. No, I ain't about to do that. He said, look at that. That's not me. I said, it's all right. Just come by me and we'll walk down the street and you'll be Gucci. He goes, okay. I said, that easy? Yep. I said, all right. Sounds good. And he just stayed, I mean, he was like attached to my leg, David. Like literally I'm walking and he's just like grabbing on. Still scared, but knew I had everything under control. Wow, Woo! I thought it was interesting as my son was pointing something out I had not seen yet. My little four-year-old, dad, we're not going down that way. You see that over there? I think it's interesting. In verse 36, this is what's happening. John is going, look, it's the Lamb of God. Look, it's the Lamb of God. You see that? And the disciples are like, off of those five words, look, it's the Lamb of, okay, six words, God. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> six words. Look, it's the Lamb of God. Off those six words, go to the next verse. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. So curious about what the Lamb of God meant, they were like, nah, I'm all about this. All because John pointed and said, look, it's the Lamb of God. It's the Lamb of God. I can't help but to think about this because these are the disciples. And the disciples are talked about in scripture a lot. A lot of times people will start to use the crowd and the disciples, right? Almost in every story you got the crowd and I think our pastor, he'll, he'll say, and the crew, right? And a lot of people will say, hey, are you a part of the crowd or are you part of the crew? Now people will look at me and go, well, what's the difference? It's very, very simple. From six words, look, it's the Lamb of God. Are you the person that goes, hey, I'm following you? Or are you the person that goes, hey, what can you do for me? Ah, okay. It's in scripture. Let's go. 36, look, the Lamb of God, verse 37. When the, disciples heard, uh, when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus, 38. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? Woo, here we go. I'm about to mess up your breakfast right now. You want Jesus to say that to you, don't you? What do you want? What do you want, Elijah? What do you want, Anthony? What do you want, John? What do you want, mate? What do you want, Nick? What do you want, Daniel? What do you want? The disciples have him right there. Because this, isn't this what we do with God? God, come on, bro. You know what I want? I want this election to be over with. Let me know which one is which. Man, if you could just make this happen in my life, I'll be all good. What do you want? What do you want? I, I can't help but to think, that we have got to look at this next piece right here because this begins to decipher the difference between a person of the crowd and a person of the crew. 
Go back, uh, verse 38. He says, what do you want? And they said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Where are you going? What are you doing? Tell me more about where you're headed. Woo! Ain't that a great answer to when Jesus says, what do you want? Well, God, I want whatever you have. So where are you headed? Where are you going? What do you see? What do you want to do? Woo, that is the difference between someone who's a part of the crowd, someone who is a part of the crew. And I love what Jesus says. He says, well, verse 39, come and you will see. Now that's the frustrating part. You ain't going to tell me where we're going. I wonder if Jesus didn't tell them where he was headed because he would, they were going to do exactly what we do as Christians. If you just tell me where we're headed, Lord, please. And then he tells us and we go, sweet, cool. I'll meet you there. Because I'm going to get there. I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. I'm trying to do whatever I got to do to get there. I'm trying to, I'm going to get there before anyone else gets there, right? But it says, come and you will see. You, that scripture right there says, hey, look, I value the relationship that you and me can have. And I want to walk alongside with you. I don't want you to go ahead of me. I don't want you to be behind me either. I, it's come and you will see where we are headed. Verse 41. The first thing that Andrew did was find his brother and tell him, we have found the Messiah, verse 42, and he brought him to Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus. Put the, put the title back up real quick. I believe a true follower of Jesus points and brings people to Christ. A true discipler of Jesus Christ points and brings people to Jesus. You want to be deep? Point me to Christ. You want to be rich in Scripture? Bring me to Jesus. This is the first thing the disciples did. I'm spitting everywhere. It's the first thing. This is it. The crowd wasn't doing any of this. The disciples were understanding. Nah, I got to point to them and I got to bring them along. I got to point to them and I got to bring them along. Hey, no, 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 no. That's my Jesus. No, not this one. No, 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 no. That's my Jesus. Come on alongside me. Let's do this. What? No, come and you will see. You see him? That's the Lamb of God. That's the God of grace. That's the God of redemption. That's the God of deliverance. That's the God of holiness. That's the God of righteousness. That is my God. Come here. Come here. And you'll see. Let me bring you along. Point and bring. I almost called this the PB and J. Point and bring me to Jesus. That's all you need is a good PB and J. I want you to have a PB and J kind of Christianity. I don't, I don't care if you can quote scriptures. If you can't live them out, if you can't point people to Jesus and you keep pointing people to yourself, that's an issue. That's an issue. I wonder why the church is in the place that it's in. I know no one cares about these lights. No one cares about this. Why? It don't make a difference. It don't. I had a youth pastor that had an, a, a budget of $500 a year to reach people. You think he had lights? I don't even think he had a microphone. He was in a gym player. He used the echo, hey, right? You think that, no, that's not what we're here for. That's not it. All we wanna do is point people to Jesus with our lyrics. 
all we want to do is bring people to Jesus that are in Uganda and are in Canada and Australia. That's, that's why we exist. Nah, nah, but we all about influence and culture. Let me tell you something about our, our vision statement. We exist to develop youth who influence culture. And because you know how to point and bring people to Jesus, then you'll be able to influence culture. That's why we do what we do. That's why we do Rhythm Nights. That's why we're on Twitch. That's why we're coming up with lyrics. By we, I mean them, not me. Um, that's, that's why we do it. That's it. That's it. It's to point and bring people to the Holy Spirit because nothing else will suffice. Nothing else will suffice. One of the greatest revelations I ever had, and if you're in the room right now, you can stand up. We're gonna go into a time of, of worship and just reflect on this moment. One of the greatest revelations I ever had was in youth ministry. And I was in a, a, a service kind of just like this. Obviously the pandemic wasn't happening and so we weren't watching online, but um, I remember my youth pastor telling me, hey, no matter what you do with your life, if you can give him every bit of it, every bit of it, if you can focus your life on him with what you do, how you do it, and in which the way you do it, you'll be set. You'll be fine. And I thought to myself, that is such a hard concept for us to understand nowadays. You know, we're about to sing this song and it says, and the praise is yours, and the praise is yours, and the praise is yours. And if I'm honest, and if we're honest in the chat, that's hard. Because we want the praise to be mine. We want the praise to be ours. We want the praise to be me, me. And tonight I wanted to come and tell you that a true follower of Jesus Christ, someone who is a part of the crew and not just the crowd. Because you know, the crowd gets the community, but the crew gets the change. And every single one of us needs a change in our life. We want that change. We earn for that change. I'm telling you right now that when you begin to point and bring people to Jesus Christ, the only thing that you can do is begin to sing to Jesus and the praise is yours. I'm not good enough and I don't deserve it and the praise is yours. I'm grateful for you. I'm a lot further than I have ever been and the praise is yours. And so tonight, this is what I want you to do, whether you're in your living room, your kitchen, your car, um, I, I, want, I want you to stop, move all the distractions away, and I want you to begin to raise your hands. Come on, almost like a funnel, like this. And I want us to sing this song, and the praise is yours. And I want, I want to do it for a long time, a long time, because I want it to get molded into our brains. I want it to get imprinted on who we are because this is something that we're having to shift constantly in a generation the praise isn't about me the praise is about you the praise isn't about what i do the praise is about you so come on sing it out right here right here come on believe it 